Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend at the Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship. I'm standing here in beautiful Squalicum Park here on the Bellingham waterfront. Behind me is a sunset on the Bellingham waterfront. I'm standing here because I want to talk to you about the gift I plan to try to make for the Mayfair auction and gala coming up in June. I plan to make a sculpture of a sunset on the Bellingham waterfront. Like all of my sculptures, I plan nothing. I design it as I make it. So the sunset in my sculpture will probably be very different than the sunset I'm standing in right now. But that's the whole fun of being an artist. While I'm making this, I would like to invite you to come along in the journey of my making this sculpture out of glass, metal, lots of glue, lots of electrical wiring, and lots of LED. The sculpture will mysteriously appear in the Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship building. Where? I don't know yet. I'm just going to go there, find a place to plop the sculpture down. Of course, I most likely will not ask for permission. I go by the philosophy, the old adage, that probably came from a Bible millennia ago, and that is sometimes more prudent to seek forgiveness than to seek permission. So right now, come along with me on my journey. Here is a very, very rough drawing what I'm trying to do. There'll be a metal frame. On either side, there'll be a torch, symbolizing the chalice and torch that we use. The very bottom will be a metal and or glass. I haven't decided yet for the bay, the water. Then the hills would be maybe a piece of metal or extra glass, I don't know. Then you have a piece, several pieces of glass, either engraved or sandblasted would be the clouds in the sky. And then behind that would be pieces of metal for the sky. There'd be LEDs shining on each one of these in different colors. So this is kind of a very rough diagram. The final thing will most likely not represent this at all. So here we go. Here's the beginning of the assembly. Okay, now I've completed the welding of the panels, one for the facade of the glass depicting the ocean, and one for the metal engraving of the ocean as well. Now, I've only welded this on one side. The public side will have, uh, is clean, and the, the burnishings will be clean. Now, I want to point out at this time, when you're doing welding, it's extremely important to be hyper aware of what's hot and what isn't. In my case, because I'm so darn absent-minded, every time I finish a weld, I would turn everything off, go into the house, work on something else for about 20 minutes, or take a nap, or have a meal, and come back out. At that point in time, I know that everything on the table is cool. It is super easy to get burned while welding. Now, what I did in addition to the panels, 
I took the liberty of welding the bolts onto the panel that holds the glass. Now, I want to show you how I do um, fasteners. Instead of drilling a hole in the piece and bolting through the metal, I don't want the public to see the heads of the bolts. So I'll take a flat head bolt like this. I'll put it against the metal like this. Then I will carefully take weld around the edge of the flat edge. Oh, I'm sorry, the flat head of the bolt. Welding the flat head of the bolt, in my opinion, provides just as much strength as putting the bolt through the hole uh, as you normally would. It has the advantage of concealing the bolt from the public. My plan is, as I indicated, this is the piece that will hold the glass that has the glass engravings of the waves of the ocean. This piece of metal will have the, the ground burnishing showing waves of the ocean. And this will be edge lit by LEDs on the far side of the glass. So they will be mounted something like this, but with the piece of engraved glass where my thumb is. So that means these bolts here need to go into something to hold this in place with this metal. This, along with being the metal part of the ocean will also be the supporting member for the remainder of the sculpture. The things will need to be mounted onto here. This also has to be mounted onto the legs that hold the sculpture up. The plan, hopefully, if all goes well, will be to have legs mounted like, welded like so, onto this, it look something like that. These will be welded. And these, in turn, will be welded to the feet. So it's going to be something like this. These will be welded to here and to here. Now, I'm going to probably weld them something like this, but most of the weight will be born in the back of the piece, which means for balance, I want the majority of each of the feet to be in the rear. There will be very little weight in the front. Just for you, in case you're curious, these feet I made from two dado saw blades I picked up for 50 cents a piece at the restore. I ground off the bits so they're not sharp. So, my next step is to actually take two five, uh, five sixteenths nuts, something like this. I'm going to weld one to each of the feet, like this, because the nuts will act as the nut holes or the bolts holding the facade for the glass. Once I weld the nuts to the legs, then I have to properly space the legs. So the nuts were aligned with these bolts. I'll show you more in detail as we go along. The next step, to weld these nuts, and actually they'll go probably something like this, that I'm going to eyeball all that, and then weld these in place. So, let's um, set this aside. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. The, the placement of the glass, of the facade for the glass for the ocean is going to be something like this. So I lay this approximately how I want it. Now nothing, nothing in this project is exact. It is art. I'm not worried about being super finicky about placement. So if we're going to have the metal facade for the ocean, something like that, and the glass here, the placement would be such that this piece of metal will have a half in, a quarter inch overlap with the metal part of the ocean. So a placement like that, and then gently lift this out so that that's the proper positioning of the bolts for the facade like this. Actually, it can be like this. So the placement of the leg is going to be such that something like this. So 
just with a grin, just for the hell of it, I'm going to weld each of these bolts about halfway up the respective leg. Once I do that, then I'm going to actually bolt them to here, and then while they're bolted together, that will force a proper alignment of the nuts and the legs. Once I do that, then I'm set to weld the legs on to the facade of the piece. So, what I'm going to do now is place these like so. Then I have to clamp these down, clamp the nuts down. And here we have the nuts welded on to the legs and they're bolted on for proper placement. Now, just to remind you, the facade for the glass will be placed approximately with a one quarter inch overlap with the facade for the metal. So it looks something like so for the placement. Now, what I have to do is I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. The, the leg for the metal will be welded so that the facade or the decorative part of the silverware I want to show like this, which means I, I'm going to turn this over and the weld is going to actually be here on the bottom. So I'm going to cheat. It's hard to weld it like this. I'm just going to drop the uh, facade itself below the brass bench, push these in for balance, and kind of eyeball it from beneath here hopefully with approximately a quarter of an inch overlap between the facade for the glass and the metal facade for the ocean. So it's going to be something like this. Now remember, this is artwork. You know, we don't really care about precision. So let's try this. I'm going to weigh this down. I guess that won't work. Uh, let's try to support this. Oh, that's still not working. Uh, let's see. Got another piece here. Now, something like that. Now, it's an eyeball. It looks kind of cozy there. So I'm going to do a weld here and here. That will hold the legs to the metal facade here, and likewise these legs will support the sculptures. These welds are going to have to be fairly hefty. They're going to have to hold the sculpture as well as the um, facade for the water. So, let's see what we can do. Now, obviously, if I mess up, it would not be the first time. I would not hold any remorse. I probably, like any other time I have a disaster, I'll burst out laughing. So, let's see. Here are two. Two three inch bolts and we'll weld them like so. Now remember, the metal piece with the hills is going to be here, followed by two or maybe three glass panes, which will be either sandblasted or engraved for the clouds and the sunset. Then behind that will be one or more pieces of metal. That's all, those are all going to be hanging off of these bolts. So these are going to be holding quite a load, but they'll be anchored, welded to this, which is welded to the leg, and that will be welded to the feet. So now, I'm going to weld the bolts on. I'll leave the camera running, and so I was off camera for the previous bolts. So basically, these are flat head screws, as you can see. I got them just resting here on the metal, like that, 
They, they, don't, they don't have to be exact where they are because this is artwork. This is not something that has to be precisely machined. It is important that the metal here be clamped to the copper base because the copper plate, rather, is the ground for the welding. So here we go. We're done with the base with the exception of welding the base to the feet. Okay, it can look something like this. Now what we have to do is we're going to weld the back side of the feet first since we cannot get at the front side of the feet due to the bolts here. But we don't want to remove those until at least one side of the feet is welded. So it's going to be something like this. Now what I have to do is to kind of jig this in place so it is vertical, truly vertical, when the feet are horizontal. Now here's where we get some really interesting fun. Ah, and I play, get to play a uh, rude golfer. So what I'm going to do is two steel bars into the vise like something like this. Now, it's going to be really interesting because, well, okay, it looks like I can, the bolts in the way on one side and the foot's in the way on the other side, I can't get them exactly paired up. Hopefully that's enough that will not flip in my face. We tighten this vise, and that means this is held rigid vertically like this. Now, you place everything like that. Then to hold the feet horizontally, we're going to clamp each one down because this stuff really loves to warp when I'm welding it. And it will weld and warp in uh, directions never expected because it has a mind of its own, for better or worse. Okay, now that we've got the base done, here's my proposal for the, the shoreline in the hills. Now remember, this will bolt on here. So holes will be drilled here and here to go on to these bolts. The glass for the sunset itself will be glued to the back of this. What I'm going to have to do since these are scrap pieces that I found, I have to weld them together to create one contiguous piece. The basic grinding and burnishing has been complete. You can see the piece now, the, uh, the three facades. What I'm going to do now is to create the contour of the shoreline. So you have Lummi Island Hill. Mount Constitution and coming down to Lummi Point, something like this. To do that, first of all, I'm going to take this piece off. I'm going to take the rest of the sculpture and set it aside and get it out of the way. Now, to cut the metal to create the contour of the shoreline, I'm going to use a tool called a plasma cutter. A plasma cutter is similar to your acetylene cutting torch, but it uses an electric plasma. It uses compressed air. I'm going to quickly show you with the um, plasma flame later on. It is a plasma flame, which means it's um, very hot and will cut through steel. Now, because you're gonna, I'm going to have molten steel, blasting out from the opposite side of the torch. I have to have a pan of water to catch and quench the molten steel. Otherwise, we have a lot of hot steel blasting around. What we're going to do is to clamp the workpiece. Now, this is, this is artwork, so it's not going to be perfect. But here we go. Put the hood, put the hood down.
obviously it's the not burning all the way through because it burns through right here. It's just going to set the load to take me. Down here, 
and this I weld to the um, chalices, which I will make. Now here is the best part of the time. The solution to the problem for the chalices was included in this wonderful trip, and I found three discarded steel saw blades. They must have gone dull in sawing wood, but it's quite suitable for what I need to do. What I'll do with these is I will plasma cut the chalices out of the saw blade. So, it's, hopefully I can get this done right. The first part would, be, would come up like this. And then down and across, and down like this. So this would be the first part of the chalice. Now what I will do is weld the tip of a butter knife blade here, weld the, another tip of another butter knife blade here, and these will be for the side torches. So there will be a quartz crystal glued here, another quartz crystal glued here, here. Then the tricky part is the main chalice itself. The chalice they use as a fellowship goes something like this. And bear with me, I may not get it exactly right. It comes up like this and over to one side like this. Then it goes across like this. And then down and back across like this to a point and then down like this. Essentially it's a number seven, an offset chalice. In here will be another knife blade welded here and this will be the main to torch, a large quartz crystal. This is the torch that we use. These crystals, I anticipate lighting yellow or orange. This will be lighted with multiple LEDs, with multiple colors, create the color white. Chalices. This is, see now, yeah, this is how you'll see them. The knife blades are already in place for, to hold the quartz crystals. Now we've got a little puzzle to put together. We need to essentially suspend these, one to each side, and somewhere up, uh, up like something like that. You're going to have the sunset right here. So let's do something like, oh hell, something like that, okay? So let's move these down like this, okay? Then we'll take this and we're going to have to hold this, brace it, and cheat and use this. Move these down a little further, you know, something like that. Um, kind of eyeball that. That kind of, I guess, looks cozy enough, more or less the same height. Again, with art, you don't want to be so damn fastidious or fastidious or whatever the damn word is. Uh, that ruins the whole experience. So let's set them up like that. Um, oh, let's see. Now let's do that. So we're going to weld here. 
Well, the chalice to the wrench, and this, well, the wrench to the base down here. Then, of course, I have to let these things cool off. Then I'll weld this to the side of the, um, of the, um, uh, sculpture. And of course, I'm going to hold this down to make sure that we get a good electrical ground between the copper plate, which is grounded to the ground of the welder. You need a good ground for this weld to work. So here we go. Put this on. Uh, let's see, I'm put the gloves on. Welding mass, so here we go. Try this one first. are appropriately sized gobs of molten metal. I am going to go ahead shut down for the night. Uh, it's probably, knowing my luck, it's probably 1am. And this kind of stuff you really don't want to do when you're starting to nod off. Here I'm about to prepare the crystals to be mounted onto the sculpture. Now, quartz crystals are very special. They possess magic and healing powers. Therefore, when I work on them, but especially doing cutting and preparing, I need to give them utmost respect. I'll kiss them with a blessing first. Give them a little energy. Ready to go. But this step, which uses a stone cutting machine, which is simply a steel wheel that's impregnated or sintered with industrial diamonds. This is an extremely messy task. I'll be putting on a plastic poncho to keep the water from spraying all over me. There will be a lot of water as well as particles of quartz flying all around. And I really don't want to get the camera wet. But I'm going to do this off camera and then come back with you. But basically it's very simple. I'm going to take each crystal, I'm going to cut the bottom off so it's flat, then I'm going to put a slot in the bottom. That slot will straddle the blade that will support the crystal.
Okay, we're done with the crystals. Preparing the crystals. The cutting. So you cut them, you cut it flat at the bottom, and you see a slit in the bottom of each crystal. Give them back their energy. Um, we go into the sculpture. Something like this. Okay, that's how they'll look inside the sculpture. You can see the uh, slit in the crystals straddles, straddles the blade. So it creates a good firm mount. My next step, which I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to use a um, System 360 um, binary epoxy to epoxy the crystals onto the um, sculpture. Okay, here you see the quartz crystals with the lights. There are two LEDs under each of the small quartz crystals, yellow and orange. There are four LEDs under each of the large crystals, and that's why you see the multiple colors. Of course, what you see in the camera does not justify what's actually there, so I'm going to try to zoom in, but Photography does not do this stuff any justice at all. I'm going to try to change the brightness level so you can maybe see the colors, but probably about the best I can do right there. Now, I did a fair amount off camera. I created the mounting brackets with the three different panels depicting the sky. The lower sky, the aqua sky, will be on here, and it will be fairly low, something about this high. Then on this bracket, there'll be two pieces of metal. You'll be seeing the middle sky, which is the blue sky starting about here, ending about here, then this bracket here is for the upper sky, the violet sky, starting about here and then ending. So um, I found two pieces of scrap stainless I happen to have. This one has a little bit cut out from a previous project for Christmas, so that doesn't matter. This would be the upper sky. I'm just going to cut a straight line across here, drill two holes, and that will mount in the bracket. This will be backlit with violet LEDs, and that's no problem. Now here we have a piece. I'm going to try to creatively cut this in half, probably like so. So the lower sky would actually be this, the cyan, and that will be, and I'm going to cut it in a wavy line. And then, I'm just going to take the uh, remaining piece, turn it over, and, uh, yeah, turn it over, and that will be the middle sky, the blue sky, which will be against the violet sky. So you see a wavy line from cyan to blue, and a wavy line from blue to violet, and the violet will end in a straight line. I'm going to do all this doing plasma cutting. Since you've seen the plasma cutting before, I don't need to do that on, on camera again. One thing I want to show you now that I'm working on the steel sky is how do I create the shimmering effects of the sky in the background. Pretty simple. This tool is a surface grinder. Um, it's got a uh, abrasive wheel 
and I'm just going to gently grind the surface of this piece of stainless steel. It's going to create a circular scratches on the wheat on the steel. Those scratches will reflect the LEDs, but the LEDs will be well. Better way to put it, the LEDs will be about where the screwdriver is, aimed up at a very tight angle to the steel. And the light will hit the steel and then refract off of it. So the steel is in front of it. Say it's this. We'll have LEDs in the back of it that you can't see them, but they'll be aimed up at the burnished steel that you see. So it's going to do something like this. I'm just going to do the one piece on camera and do the rest off camera. So here we go. Here I'm going to try to demonstrate how the light behaves with the burnished metal. What I've done here is just simply taped in single LEDs to the back of this piece of metal. So when I turn the front of the metal towards you, the LED itself is concealed, which is my goal. Now, let me bring the piece of burnished metal close behind the um, front metal. And you see now the light from the LED shimmering off of the different grindings. It does, at different angles, it shimmers differently. So if, you, if I turn it, you can see it shimmering. It's hard to see it now because of the daylight in the room. But I hope you get the general idea. My next task is to take the three skies, actually two skies, because we're not going to have any LEDs in the back of the high sky. So that can be set aside. Here is the blue sky here, and next is the aqua sky, the low sky. I'm going to now glue some LEDs. I'm going to glue the violet LEDs on back of the blue sky. They will shine on the violet sky. I then will glue the blue LEDs on back of the aqua sky or the low sky to shine on the blue sky which is the mid sky. I cannot shine, mount the aqua or cyan LEDs yet but those will go on back of the engraved glass which is not done yet. So I'll be back when I'm ready to start engraving the glass but that will be the next step after these LEDs are mounted and wired. With the glass, I'm going to be doing what's called engraving or carving. This is different than chemical etching in that I'm going to be using a diamond studded steel ball that actually cuts into the glass so there's no chemicals involved. This does use a lot of water to um, keep the heat generated by the friction down. I'm also using a powerful flashlight to shine into the edge of the glass. That way, I can, it makes it easier to see what I'm cutting. So what I'll be doing is grinding the, or cutting, the waves of the ocean into the glass. I'll continue this off camera, and I'll be back and show you the sandblasting. Now I'm going to show you sandblasting. This is a container that contains silicon aluminum oxide um, particles that will be blasted out by compressed air onto the glass. So watch carefully. You can see that I am actually drawing on the glass with sand. Um, you can concentrate it or you can make it kind of very vague. So I'll be doing that for the clouds in the sky. Well, I went ahead and did the final assembly off camera. This is how the sculpture appears fully assembled, but with no lights yet. I have not done the wiring, but I'll show you that later. The assembly was fairly mundane, rather boring. I had to uh, bolt everything in sequence. So the front 
the front ocean is right here, that's bolted to the frame right here. Then you have the frame itself, which supports the torches. And then you have the, um, the hills here, along with the glass sky, uh, glass clouds. Then you have the lower sky here, and you have the middle sky here, and of course you have the final upper sky here. Um, Again, that's how it appears from the front. I'm going to move it back and forth so you can see how the metal will shimmer even in the ambient light. Later on, when it gets a little dark and I've finished the wiring, I'll sh present the final sculpture. Here we have the final project done with the lights on. It's extremely difficult to photograph this because the dynamic range of the camera is vastly less than the dynamic range of the human eye. I'm going to try to change the ISO level. See, right now at ISO 400 we get a good view of the LEDs or the lights in the sculpture. I'm going to raise the I.O. ISO, as you can see, the sculpture with the LEDs plus the background illumination. Unfortunately, the LEDs start to get wiped out. So you, you really cannot do justif justification of this with a camera. What I'm going to do now is zoom in on the waterfront part of it. Here you see the waves of the ocean. Again, if I change the ISO a little bit lower, you get more true representation of the colors of the waves of the ocean. Those are done with glass engraving. And you're looking at the light as it refracts off of the engravings of the glass. I'm going to go back out now because I want to show you what happens when you walk past the sculpture. We're now zoomed back out. What I'm going to do now is move the sculpture back and forth so you can see the effect of the light as it shimmers off of the metal. So as you walk past the sculpture, you can see it kind of come alive with the light shimmering. So that's pretty much it. You really need to see the sculpture in person when it's being displayed at the Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship to fully appreciate all of the different parts of the mediums. So that is it for now. I want to thank you very, very much for sharing this journey.